Hi there guys and welcome to another Fusion 360 tutorial. We're going to be drawing a C clamp in this uh, series. So um, it's going to look something like this at the end of this tutorial. Our very basic um, shape and outline here of our C clamp. Right, and we're going to be using this drawing. It's got all the dimensions on that we need. Um, on the surface it appears pretty straightforward. You know, why not just draw this kind of C shape and extrude it out? Well, the problem is this flanged area here. Um, getting this to all line up properly was actually, I mean, not too difficult, but um, it requires a certain process. Maybe there's other ways of doing it, but this is the procedure that I undertook. So let's jump right in with a um, new project here. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do, obviously, is save it so that uh, we kick off our autosave. And we'll call this the C clamp body. We uh, save that and then we'll create a new component. So, when I'm working on projects like this, I like to create a component because it starts uh, a timeline for that particular component. So, it just keeps everything tidy, it keeps our main timeline a lot tidier and easier to go back and edit things because we can go into one component, we can see the bodies that make up that component, we can see the timeline for that component. So, we'll go ahead and click on new component and we'll name this the C clamp body and okay you'll see over here now that creates a new component with its own tree that we can open up so the first thing that we're going to do is create a um, rectangle shape a center rectangle and our dimension <coughs> for this uh, I've got one missing here. That would be our distance from here to here. So let's just throw that dimension on. So that would be from this point to this point in a straight line is 70. Okay? So we want a rectangle that's 70 by 120. So we'll go over into here and we click sketch. We'll do it on our top down plane. And we want this to be a construction line, so we turn on construction here and a rectangle, it'll be a center point rectangle and we said it was 70 by 120. Now, a um, little thing, a uh, new feature in Fusion 360, 3D Sketch, if we turn that off, um, it'll just make things a little bit easier for us. Uh, sometimes you end up dragging things in, in, in a different plane, so um, just turn that off if we're not working in 3D Sketching place center point and, and pull this out. So um, we want this to be 70 by 120. So it's 70 by 120, we hit enter. So now we have a center point rectangle fully constrained around our origin point in the middle there. Okay. Um, so once we have this uh, shape, um, we can actually then begin to work on Pulling this out so we end up with a rectangle um, that we're then going to cut into the shape that we want it to be. Okay? And that may sound a little strange why I'm going to do it that way, but you'll see in a short while why I'm doing it in this way. Okay? So. We'll turn... Uh, Turn this first of all, actually not from construction, turn off construction. These center lines here need to be construction lines, sorry. And finish sketch. Now we know our thickness of this is 13. Okay, so we're going to extrude this out by 13. Okay. And now we're going to draw our shape that goes here at the front. Okay? That's this part here. And we're going to draw it basically from a front on view like this. Alright? So we'll create a new sketch on this plane here.
and our size of this is 9 by 19.5 okay that's 9 by 19.5 uh, wide so we need to draw again a rectangle here it's 9 by 19.5 so I'm going to draw it off to the side we'll see why in a moment 19.5 wide 9 tall okay next our dimension from the top down is actually going to be 29 okay so to the bottom of this to the top of here it's 29 it's 20 plus the 9 now okay so we can position that we'll put in a construction line from the midpoint of here to here will be 29. Now we can constrain this rectangle, move it into place by choosing midpoint. The midpoint of this should be coincident with that point there. And that will move our rectangle now into position. Now we'll just tidy up these dimensions here so it's a little bit easier to read. Okay, so you follow that, we've got 29 down. We have a, a fully constrained rectangle here, 19.5 uh, by 9, and it's 29 down. Now the next thing we need to look at is this distance here, 3.67. This is going to be an important distance, okay? 3.67 down is where these webs are going to intersect. So we're going to create a point. It's going to be coincident with this line. I put a dimension on there of 3.67. And now, turn off construction, we can draw this in. Draw this across and up from this side. Now you can see we have a fully constrained sketch that's in the correct uh, position that we need. And we can go to finish sketch. Now we can extrude this out. Actually, we'll just uh, change this center line here into a construction line. Just to keep things tidy. Go back to edit sketch. And we'll change this to construction. This makes it a little bit easier for us when we go to extrude. We've only got two faces to select there. And this is going to come back in this direction. And the distance is 22.2 according to our drawing. Okay. Minus 22.2. Now we've got that shape there. Okay. Now we're going to come back to our original sketch. If we open this up here, you'll see there's our original sketch. We're going to come back to that and edit our original sketch here. Okay? Now, we're going to create the curves needed. All the dimensions that we need, I believe, are here. If not, then we can always throw on a couple more. I think we do need a dimension from here to here. Oh yeah, it's 22.2 also. Okay, so 22.2 in and 5 up is going to be our um, first point here. Okay, we're going to create this point. We're going to actually create all of these points and we're going to join them up with a C-spline. Okay, so 22.2 in and 5 up. So I'm going to grab this and we're going to move it to be coincident with this line here whoops sorry perpendicular I mean uh, no coincident yeah no, no, no. coincident to this line here 
see that moves it back and now we can move this around but we can only move it in this direction okay and it needs to be 22.2 in from the end and 5 up so we make this into 5 and then we throw another dimension on here which will be 22.2 that puts this into our correct location so there is our first point now and we also need to change this to a construction line so there's our first point uh, we're also going to need a point here in the middle so we go to create point and we'll snap that to the midpoint there okay and now 20 up how far in you see we have another point here Correctly. That's 40. Let's just tidy that up. Okay, so 40 in from the end here is where we're going to have our tangent point now that meets, okay, with our outer box. So 40 in and 20 down. 20 down here and 40 in here. So create a point on here. And also on here. Whoops, we don't want that to snap to midpoint. Okay, dimension. This is going to be 40. And that's going to be 20. Okay? So now we've created these points. So basically we're creating the points where the spline hits the edge of our box, okay? At the edge of the rectangle that we originally drew. Now we're going to need another one over here. And that's going to be the distance from this point to this point. Or we could measure it because we already have that point from here to here. It's 22.8. Okay? So 22.8 in, we have another point there. That's 22.8 from here. Create a point. Stick it on there, dimension from here to here, 22.8. Now it shifts that point into position. Okay, now there's one other thing that I need to do here. To create this shape properly, if I put in a um, C spline now, we go from here, here here, to here, to here. Now, we have a little problem. This is going outside of our bounds here. And this is actually too curved. We need to actually restrain it here. We need to pull this back a bit. So we'll undo that. And what we're going to do is create a, another point along this edge. And the way we'll do that is we'll create a line and we'll make it coincident with here. And we add a dimension to this say 15. We add a dimension to this. We 
which will say 10 to begin with, okay? That's 10 and 15 on either side there. And then we'll do the same over here. We'll create another one. Now I could just mirror it across, but I don't want to because actually this side is going to be subtly different. Not much, but a little bit different. So coincident to here. Dimension. We'll start with the same. 15 by 10. Okay. Now we turn, uh, sorry, these should actually be construction lines. Now we grab our C-spline again. Follow this around. You see how that looks a lot better. However, we're still going out a little bit here. Okay? If we change the dimension of this, it goes out further. But if we go in the opposite direction, it'll come in. You see now it's fitting inside of our our bounding box there. Just sneaking out a little bit. So maybe we make this nine. Now I think it will be a perfect fit almost. Almost. Make it eight. There. Yeah. Okay. Now if we change also this length here, you'll see a difference again. See? So we make that 8 also. And it just subtly changes the shape there a little bit so we fit inside of a box. And it also makes this edge here a little straighter, okay? So, we are done with this shape now. Um, the outer shape here, which is probably the more difficult part to do. Uh, so we're coming in 15 and 20.2. So make another line here. It's going to be 15. Shift that dimension out of the way. 20.2. This one, throw a dimension on there, 71. And here we've got nine. Should line up now perfectly with here. There we go. Okay, so now we have our fully constrained shape here. Now, also this end here, we need to check it's coming out of our box a little bit, so we need to make the same kind of adjustment. Um, make that 13. That's uh, 8. Now it's fitting inside. Okay. So, we hit finish sketch. Now, we have our shape drawn on that surface there. Is where the magic happens. Extrude. We select this surface, this one, this one, and this one. And we're going to extrude two sides. 
through all. And on the other side, through all. Now, when we do through all on both sides, you'll see it throws us an error. That's because on this side, we actually need to go distance. pull it out and we'll pull it out by 10 now we have no more error we go okay now look what we have if we hide our sketch we now have our clamp with the nicely flanged top here Okay, so obviously this needs a lot more refinement, fillets and everything. We're going to do that in the next tutorial, but this is the beginning of our C-clamp shape, and um, it just showed you really some 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 uh, sketching ideas. This was all down to creating uh, sketches and thinking about how how to do this and plan it properly. And you'll see here we've done all of this with two sketches. We have one body, and our timeline is pretty simple. If we go back, we just have some simple two sketches and a couple of extrusions. And we've got this relatively complex shape. Okay, so we're going to continue working on this in the next tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Uh, it's really an introduction to the um, fit splines um, and, and uh, how we use those in order to create some, some more complex shapes. Uh, how you can fit those splines to the correct um, profile that you need. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe to keep up to date with all of our latest videos here on fusion360tutorials.com. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.